Hey guys, this is David here, and today we're going to be looking at the Amcrest 960H DVR. This is Amcrest's entry line into the HD CCTV market. This video is going to be a quick start guide to get you set up right out of the box. The first thing you'll notice when you boot up the system is the system login page. To get past this page, we're going to enter the default password 12345. This password and username can be changed at a later date. Now we're in the setup wizard. The first tab is the general configuration tab. Here we have things like language settings, the video standard, the resolution of the monitor you're viewing on. I'm using a 1080p monitor, so I'm going to leave that as the default, but you can choose whatever resolution your monitor is set to. It will refresh once you hit next on the next page. We also have things like time zone, the menu date format, the device name. This is a nickname you can assign your unit. When you search for it on the network, if you have it hooked up to your internet or router, you can search for it by this nickname. The universal identification number is listed here below. This number can be used to pair your DVR unit with the Amcrest Link app in either the Google Play Store or the Apple Store. Alternatively, you can also scan this QR code with your phone when you have the Link app open, and then it will pair your DVR unit. This is going to be great if you want to hook up your DVR unit to the internet and view it remotely on either your phone or tablet. The next page we have is the hard disk management page. Here you can find the hard drive that comes pre-installed in your unit. It's recommended you format the drive before using it, so in order to do that we're going to hit the checkbox on the left to select the drive, and then we're going to hit the initialization button on the right. It's going to mention all the data will be clear, but that's okay because the unit's brand new. It's worth noting that while this is formatting, you can actually put up to a 3 terabyte hard drive in this unit for expanded storage. The instructions on how to do that are in the setup guide. By installing a 3 terabyte hard drive, you can actually extend the recording time of this unit to almost a month. Once the hard drive has been initialized, we can hit next to continue. The next page we have here is the network configuration page. My unit is already hooked up to my router, so an IP address has been assigned to it automatically. If your unit is not hooked up to the internet or router, these fields are going to be blank. It also lists the default gateway, this is simply the router's IP address, as well as the DNS configuration. If you choose to use an alternative DNS server, you can simply hit the static DNS button here and enter the preferred and alternate DNS below. This next page lists additional network devices that are on the network. We have an IP camera here that's listed below. If you had an additional DVR unit, it would be listed below here, and you can actually pull streams from one unit and incorporate it into the video display here that you see on this unit. We don't have any devices that we want to connect right away, so we're just going to hit next to continue. This next tab is the email configuration tab. This is going to allow you to send an email alert with an included snapshot when your device detects motion. In order to configure this, you can simply enter the server name, port name, your username and password for your email, as well as the additional recipients that you wish to receive the email. You can hit the checkbox here below and that's going to send a snapshot. You can also set the interval time at which the snapshots are sent to your email address. Once all this has been entered, you can actually test this function before you begin to deploy your unit by hitting the test button below. If you hadn't written down from the previous page, this page is also going to show you another copy of your universal identification number. This number is unique to your unit and it's going to allow you to pair with the Amcrest Link app. If you have your email configured from the previous page, you can actually send this number to your email address for quick reference later. This next page is the DDNS configuration page. For the majority of users that don't have a static IP address, this page can be incredibly useful for those that want to view your cameras remotely from your computer. In order to do so, you're going to want to enable DDNS. This is going to provide you a web address that your DDNS provider is going to give you that will remain the same despite the fact that your IP address might change. In order to configure this DDNS, all you have to do is enable it, select the type, the device domain name, the username and password for the DDNS server, and then you can test this feature by hitting the test button below. If you only plan on viewing your cameras remotely from a mobile device, you're not going to need to enable DDNS as you'll simply use the QR code from the previous menu to scan into the Amcrest Link app. 
The next page we have is the system time configuration page. This is a page is pretty straightforward. In order to set the time of the unit to sync with a particular server, you can enter the credentials here below and then hit the sync button. We also have the daylight savings time configuration page. Once again, in order to enable daylight savings time, you can simply hit the checkbox, set the offset and the start and end time for daylight savings time and the unit will be configured. The next menu we see is the account configuration menu. This is the last menu in the setup wizard. In order to change the default password, you can simply enter it here in the fields below. The password can be up to eight digits long. You can also choose whether or not to have the password enabled by hitting the checkbox here. If unchecked, the next time you boot into the menu system, you will not be prompted for a password. Once the setup wizard has been completed, you can simply hit finish and you will be brought to the main screen. If you are unsure about any of the settings or configurations in the previous windows, you can have the wizard display again upon boot up. This will allow you to reconfigure your unit if you are unsure about any of the settings. It's worth noting that all of the settings that were configured in the setup wizard can be adjusted later in the main menu. We will be covering this in a future video. And that's it guys. Thank you again for watching. My name is David. We're going to be doing more videos like this in the future, so please check out the links below. If you have any additional questions, you can also email us in our knowledge base on our website at amcrest.com.